The Thunder and Spurs last met May 12th in Oklahoma City when OKC ended the Spurs season. How long ago was that? Kevin Durant was still a member of the Thunder, the only franchise he'd ever known to that point, and Tim Duncan was still an active NBA player. What hasn't changed? Winning. Even with a road-heavy start, OKC is on pace to win 48. The Spurs, meanwhile, post-Duncan are well on their way to an 18th straight 50-win season and sitting second in the West, even after losing consecutive games for the first time since November. The last time they lost three straight? You guessed it, when OKC eliminated them in that playoff series last spring. Here we go. OKC has won three of four despite losing in Cleveland over the weekend. Uh, they're ending a stretch in which 12 of their last 15 games are on the road. They'll make up for that in February with a home heavy schedule. For San Antonio, great record, but a little bit of an oddity. Six of their 11 losses so far, including Sundays against Dallas, are to teams with losing records. Kawhi Leonard, 39% in his last two after missing a pair with a sore and giant hand. Jared Greenberg is on the scene with us in San Antonio where the Spurs are in bounce back mode tonight. Jared. Yeah, no question. And they're taking on a Thunder team who would like to get back in the win column after losing to the Cavaliers. But it's a fluid situation as they learn how to play without six man of the year candidate Innes Cantor, who's out for two months after breaking his arm. And, and Russell Westbrook, still the head of the snake, will try and get an elusive triple-double tonight. One of three teams he has never recorded a triple-double against is the San Antonio Spurs. And Matt, as you mentioned, for San Antonio, their Defensive Player of the Year candidate for the third straight year is Kawhi Leonard. And as Russell Westbrook told us this morning, size matters. Size of the hands, that is. Uh, his hands, his length. He's able to use his hands, and he's quick with his hands, and uh, you got to make sure you protect the ball, especially with him. Being that you've probably seen everything that they could throw out at you, how much different is it when you got Kawhi Leonard, the two-time Defensive Player of the Year, coming at Russ? Well, that's the one thing about Russell that has been great and special to, to work with him and coach him is because, you know, he studies a lot of tape, he watched a lot of film, and Kawhi Leonard is a great defender. But I've always said this about Russell, and I think Russell will say this too, is that he is somebody that can impact the game in a lot of different ways. So depending on what's available tonight, maybe it's, you know, drives to dishes or passes, you know, it could be a situation where he's got to impact the game through assists or rebounding. But he's going to try to read the defense, make decisions, make plays that are going to try to help our team and put our team in position uh, to play, play good basketball. It's a good test. Uh, I prefer to play a, a good team, a team that presents a, a great challenge at this point when we need to step up. So hopefully we do it. Well, Matt Ginobili will like to have uh, Jonathan Simmons back. He will return uh, after missing the last three. Now, Matt, you, you mentioned all those games away from home in the month of January that the Thunder have played. In addition to that tough schedule, they've also had to face seven of the top ten rated defenses in the NBA, tonight being number seven. And so far, uh, the Thunder have fared really well against great defenses, winning four of the first six. So they welcome that challenge again tonight here at AT&T Center. All right, Jared, appreciate it. Jared Greenberg with us from San Antonio tonight here on Fan Night as we get set for the Thunder and the Spurs. And guys, when you look at Oklahoma City, uh, sitting sixth in the Western Conference right now, I mentioned more road games than home games to this point. And in February, they've got nine of their 11 games on their home floor. Even without Ennis Cantor, what's realistic for them over the next few weeks as they try to make a move in the West? I think they can go above that 70% or that 70% range. Uh, right now, it's so important for them to try to, to, to play well. You know, I, this Westbrook team reminds me a lot of uh, the 2000, I forget what year it is, when Derrick Rose won the MVP. I don't think there's 2011, any, yeah. 2011, uh, and I'm not saying he has to be the MVP. I just mean that I don't think there's any player that has to do as much for his team. Uh, you know, I, I think his triple doubles are a necessity, but if you really think about this, I can't name one player on this team besides Ennis Cantor that can get their own shot. Right. And, you know, so when I think about what he does, I just think it's, I think it's amazing. And they played well up to this point, even though, you know, his percentage hasn't been graded sometimes, even though he shot a lot of shots. But I think, Greg, he's had to do this. There you go. And um, he's getting wins out of it. Even to be at this record, the next nine out of 11, whatever, whatever you said, Matt, at home, I, I just think that's great for a team like this. And, and I think Chris hit it on the head. Sometimes, you know, what people understand in, in the NBA, because of good defense and the shot clock and the inability of a lot of guys on the floor that he's out there with at times to get their own shot, 
he's forced to take what we call a lot of 911s. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going to take tough shots generally anyway because the great <laughs> players do, but he's going to end up with the ball in his hands in a lot of those possessions. When you watch them play, those guys, their, their confidence in themselves isn't as high as it is in him as a teammate. And, and so a lot of guys – aren't willing to take that challenge yet. So he's kind of got to carry them till they grow up to the point where they feel more comfortable of being able to go make a play. It, it's a tough situation to be in because a lot of guys won't be as – only guy that I can recall being comfortable when you have those games when you're a volume shooter was Allen Iverson. Mm. Because most guys like to play efficiently, right? You don't really want to look up and be like, damn, I'm four for 22 point, yeah. in the third quarter, you know. So then they start to maybe not be as aggressive. But he finds a way – to focus on the score of the game and not the score of his stat sheet. And, and that's one reason why he's got them two games out of the four spot. They're yep. two games out of having that's home crazy. court in the first round at this stage. Uh, he's been phenomenal, and he's going to have to continue to be for them to, to win. Well, just contrast his team and his teammates with James Harden's, for instance. Oklahoma City is 29th in the NBA in three-point shooting. You can't just spread the floor and have knocked down three-point shooters out there in Oklahoma City. It's not happening right now. He doesn't have that at his disposal. San Antonio just keeps on winning. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, um, as I mentioned, 39% over his last two games. But this, this other note is more curious to me. The losses against bad teams. They had a week in which they, they went to Cleveland and won a game, went to Toronto here on Fan Night last week and won a game, turn around, lose at New Orleans, and then home against the Dallas Mavericks. What explains that? Well, nothing. It's the NBA, firstly. But secondly, I would also say it's a good thing because you're ultimately going to be judged by the teams you play in the postseason. And a lot of those teams you mentioned, they're not going to see. Right. And some of that has to be – it's also harder, and Chris knows this, when you're older, like a Manu and a Tony, it's harder to be motivated to go play a really bad team. You heard Manu say in that, mm -hmm. that clip, he's like, yeah, I much prefer playing the, the better teams because it's easier to get up for those games. And so that plays a role in it. Now, when you factor in Kawhi's last two coming off the injury – he hadn't had that, gotten back into that rhythm that we've seen all season long. But that, that stat doesn't concern me, you know, because we know they're a really good team. But we also know in the NBA, anybody can get got, and that's what's been playing out this season. They're also the original, um, they're the original um, Golden State Warriors. They're the original Cleveland Cavaliers. What I mean is everybody gives Cleveland and, and the Warriors their best games. Well, you know, if you know this game, if you're in the league, you know, you put San Antonio up there with whoever two played in the championships. Those, that's who you circle on your right. roster. And so I think they get everybody's best every night along with age and other things, but they know it's about the process, plotting along and getting it done.